What's your favorite no ducking way? Story. I followed O. J. Simpson the night of the freeway chase. Went to his house and watched him get arrested. My brother tells this one quite a bit. And for good reason. One day I was over at his place. We were about to grab a bite and a movie. The topic of books came up. He was just starting to reread some Ray Bradbury. Something Wicked This Way comes which was one of his all-time favorites. He tells me how amazing it is. Then asks what I was reading. I sort of shrug and say nothing right now. With a begrudging look upon his face. He hands over his last copy of Something Wicked. And tells me to enjoy it. Thankfully I stash the novel in my pocket. And we head out the door. On our way out he stops to check the mail. In the mail is a package. From the look and feel of it, we both know what it contains. Books. He tears open the brown packaging, and inside are two books. Something Wicked This Way Comes, and Dandelion Wine both by Ray Bradbury. Both signed and personalized to my brother. From Ray Bradbury. Too long didn't read brother gives me his only copy of his favorite book. Then 5 minutes later checks his mail and finds a personalized signed by the author copy of that same book. Last 4 digits of my phone number are my birth name Yai. My family went on an all summer trip around the eastern hemisphere. Early in the summer in Kuala Lumpur we befriended some Malaysians. A month later. We ran into them again. In Australia. This isn't that amazing. But when I was in 3rd grade my sister and I were taken by our father to Toys R Us to get our first Pokemon cards. It was just when Pokemon cards got really popular, so it was a big deal. We received 5 packs each. After waiting in line behind dozens of other crazy parents we had to wait outside the store before it opened. On our way home my sister opened her first pack of cards and there it is. Cherizard. I nearly shit myself trying to explain how amazing of a card she had just received. Her response so oh, oh it's shiny. I wouldn't call it my favorite. Because this is just off the top of my head, but it is the only thing I can think of at the moment. Last week I was hanging around outside one of the buildings on campus between classes and I saw some guy come out of the doors who looked extremely similar to one of my tars last year. I thought to myself holy shit. That looks like so and so, but I knew it wasn't him. But the fact that it looked like the tar made me think back on that class I had last year for a few moments. Literally 30 seconds after the lookalike walks out of the door, the actual tar came out of the door. It was very strange. Almost like being reminded and subsequently thinking about the person had summoned them. My oldest and dearest friend and I met when we were infants. We literally shared a crib together. Our parents have told us hundreds of stories about the things we used to do when were kids and we talked to each other three months. I don't ever remember not knowing her. She's 23 now, and I'm not too far behind her. She went to University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and I went to Michigan State University in East Lansing. About three years ago I randomly went to Ann Arbor with some friends, and was trying to find her to catch up, and see her new place. As I was walking and talking to her on the phone, she mentions she lives on Ann Street. I joke with her and say ha, ah, I live on Ann Street. What a coincidence. We should do breakfast in the morning, since we live down the street. Her funny. Jackass. Just get here the address is 517. Me wait. Your address is 517 and street. Her yes. Me my address is 517 and street. I get to her place, and realize that not only do we have the exact same address in. Different cities. But our crossroads are the same too. She lives on the corner of Annan Division I live on the corner of Annan Division. Too long didn't read I've known my bestie for my entire life and we are both living at the same address in different cities at the same time. What kind of strange spot on numerology is that? Was at a Donald Glover stand up show a couple weeks ago at RIT. During his routine. He switched to a QA bit where he started talking directly with the audience. As he's asking us what we want to talk about later in the show. Some girl screams out battle me. Turns out she was a poet who had won a freestyling competition for free tickets to Donald Glover. And she wanted to freestyle battle him. So what does he do? He calls her up on stage. Then he says that we need someone to give a beat. 
so he calls out for a beatboxer, and brings someone else up from the crowd. Finally, since he is participating in the battle, he cannot run it. So out from backstage comes his Derek comedy partner DC Pearson who was the opening act to MC the event and set the rules for the freestyle battle. They then proceeded to do a 3 round rap off. Too long didn't read Donald Glover gets challenged to freestyle battle during his stand up by a college student. Accepts. And it is MC by DC Pearson. I worked at a small restaurant on the north shore of Lake Superior the summer of my junior year in college. The woman who owned it was an ultra-conservative fundamentalist Christian they sold plots of land to people for Y2K. After a full summer full of craziness I had enough and wanted to go on a trip. My brother and I and a friend decided to go see the Grand Canyon. So I told the owner that I had to work on a paper for Bible school and would like to leave a couple weeks early. She was reluctant, but in the end, sent me off with her blessing because I was doing the Lord's work. So we head out on a road trip to the Grand Canyon. Never bothering to look on a map as to where it actually was. We ended up somewhere out west at a place called the Grand Canyon that looked totally unimpressive. So we headed up to Glacier National Park as an alternative. We pulled into a gas station near Glacier. And who the duck do I see but the owner that I'd lied to and her entire family that I'd gotten to know throughout the summer. I ducked down in the car while my brother walked by them and looked at me with this what the duck expression on his face. We tore out of there and I never saw them again. What are the odds? I once aced a hole playing frisbee golf. Another crazy guy on shroom story. The dorm complex I lived in while going to college was a series of towers. All joined to a one story building with a terrace across the top. None of us had cars or much money, so we usually spent most nights playing frisbee on the terrace, and most nights we'd get a few randoms who'd ask to join in. So this one night we are tossing the disc back and forth, and a few random guys walk across the terrace and join us. We throw back and forth for a half hour or so, and the guys seem nice enough, completely normal. Then one of the guys next to me starts acting a bit erratic, and after a while he turns to me and says the shrooms are kicking in. So at pretty much the same time, my buddy puts too much into his throw and sends the disc flying above our heads and off the terrace. It hits some trees right next to the building and falls to the ground 30, 40 ish feet below. Shroom's guy sees the disc fly off, screams I've got it, runs to the railing, and as his friends and my friends are screaming at him to stop, he jumps off the railing, spread eagle into a patch of trees next to the building. We all run to the edge expecting to see his head smashed open on the sidewalk below, but he's hanging from a branch just below terrace level. He looks up at us with a big shit eating grin on his face and yells now watch me swing from branch to branch like curious ducking George. He then proceeds to do just that, with all the nimbleness of a circus chimp, and after making his way to the lower branches, jumps the remaining 10 feet to the ground. He throws the disc back, runs off, and we never see him again. Too long didn't read guy on shrooms, jumps off building terrace into trees and swings from branch, to branch like Tarzan to recover a frisbee from the ground, that probably could have been recovered by just taking the stairs. I went out cruising with a friend of mine and his friends. It was late, probably around 1am or so, and we were cruising down main street. Up ahead the traffic came to almost a crawl. This is weird, since it's late at night. We could see up ahead that there were three Ford Focuses all lined up and purposefully slowing traffic. My friend's older brother, who was driving, hops in the median and guns it up to the Focuses. We see that it's just a bunch of kids getting their rocks off doing a shallish things. The driver says oh duck no. He turns to my friend and says you know what to do. He speeds ahead of the three focuses and pulls up on the side of the street. My friend grabs a cordless drill from the back of the suburb and the vehicle we were in jumps out of the vehicle and takes off the license plate. The focuses were past us at this point still going slow to piss off the people behind them. My friend gets back in the suburban and we take off. The driver speeds up to the focuses, gets in the median next to the far left focus, flips them off, then crashes his suburban into the focus switch in turn crashes into the other focuses. At this point I'm like, what the duck just happened? 
We watch for a minute as we watch these kids trying to get over their airbags and start assessing the damage. Everyone in the vehicle is busting up laughing and we take off flying down Main Street. When we got back to my friend's house he puts the license plate back on and pops the dent out of the Suburban. Too long didn't read a friend's brother purposefully crashed into three cars because the people were driving like jackasses. We got away with it. I was driving home to our small town from a nearby city 200 miles. We were in a pickup truck and I was alone on the back we can do that in Africa we were doing about 80 to 100 miles per hour all the way quiet roads no cops we get home okay. I grab my stuff and get out and as my friend starts to reverse back out. The front tire breaks off I mean like off axle sitting on the ground tire rolling into the road. If that had happened anywhere on the road the truck would have gone ass over tea kettle and I would have been spread across a 100 yards of tarmac. Inserted my USB flash drive correctly the first time. I once visited Reddit and found a post titled, found this gem in my local burrito joint on the front page. Surely this must be the Pulp Fiction poster at BTB I thought it was. When my ma was about 19 or 20, her and her twin sister were shopping in Lake City when they were approached by a man in a nice car. He asked if they wanted to get in and maybe have a drink. Ma said he was rather handsome, but they turned him down. Later that year, it was revealed on the news that the man that had approached them was Ted Bundy. And after they turned him down, he abducted and killed his last known Florida victim. Too long didn't read Ma almost got killed by Ted Bundy. I was 7 years old playing Pokemon for the first time. My brother was 14 and told me about this game a little more. Then he speaks to me about Sukun no ducking idea how to spell that. Sue me and he said that he is constantly moving at every step you take and that only the luckiest would find him. Since it was about a 10 million chance 1-1. One one. Luckiest. Duck you I said I'm finding him as soon as this conversation was over I enter in a battle with little more hope than the average battle I now had a reason to fight. With a prayer I looked at the materializing Pokemon, and it wasn't the shape of any grass Pokemon I knew. My eyes grew wide and my jaw dropped. My brother looked at me and said what's going on. To which I only replied. No ducking way. I did it. I found Sukun. It was of course on my screen. And I had the master ball up and ready to catch the bitch. Too long didn't read I was talking about a very rare thing. And it happened almost instantly. My friend Dan hosted to couch surfers from Germany at his place in Philadelphia. They came over for dinner one night and I told one of the girls, Victoria, all about how soon I would be going to Germany for study abroad and how I was excited blah blah blah. We didn't make any plans to meet up. Fast forward 5 months. I decide on a whim to visit some of my grandparents friends in Hamburg I was studying in Dusseldorf. Their eldest son asks if I want to go out for a driving tour of the city with he and his American GF. We are driving along the fish market and the GF says see those wicker chairs over there. Those are classic Hamburg style. I see a head poke out. It's one of the German couch surfers. Halfway around the world. On a whim. All of it was such coincidence. Was walking down the hallway to go to bed 12 years old. When I saw something with pitch black skin peek out from my parents bedroom at me. Only other person in the house my mother was in the kitchen. It had black. Somewhat moist skin there was a sheen to it. Dark crimson eyes. With large and long fingers. It grabbed the frame of the door. Peeked out. Locked eyes with me for a few seconds. Then sank back into the room. One I wasn't overly sleepy at the time. Two I have never before or since then ever seen something that wasn't there. 3 I was not religious, nor did I have an overactive imagination. 4 I was not taking any drugs, prescription or otherwise. 5 Neither myself nor my family has a history of mental illness. I've lived 25 years without a similar experience. So I tend to statistically exclude what happened as within the realm of possibility. But if I were to look at the situation and base my opinion merely on the experience I had that night, then I would say with 100% certainty that I truly saw something that was not human. No one has ever believed this story. As the years go by, I believe it less and less. 
but my memory of that event is still crystal clear. I knew right after it happened that I would never forget. I was outside eating at a burger joint, and Bill Ducking Murray comes up and takes a french fry. He told me no one will ever believe you. My mate's mum is a doctor, who assisted on the following which I thought was an urban myth. A 18 year old guy was playing rugby league, and after a massive tackle, his hip cleanly dislocated. They called the paramedics to come, who arrived ridiculously fast considering the injury, and proceeded to pop the hip back into place. The guy was screaming already from the pain of the dislocation, but when they popped it back in, he lost his shit. Totally, screaming and wailing like nothing else that they had heard. As it turns out, in the process of the dislocation, a lot of the muscles around that general groin area had pulled, including the testicles. One of them had gotten caught in the hip joint when it was popped back in. After when they got him to the hospital they diagnosed the issue and had to are dislocated to get it back out. Also if anyone feels bad for the guy, he had run out on his then pregnant GF about 3 weeks before. The bastard deserved it. This was maybe 5 years back, give or take. I was visiting my old taekwondo studio and taking the morning classes which were adults, only but all ranks welcome. I got to visit and work out with a bunch of old friends. But there was a relatively new girl there let's call her Rita. Rita was very energetic, squeaky voiced and kind of a flirt. I had hung out with her a few times, but I knew nothing was gonna happen between us. I heard too many stories about her on-off boyfriend, and she just reeked of drama and crazy. Turns out it was a good decision, because she made an insane request to me one day. Rita and her boyfriend were apparently together again, and having a bit of a pregnancy scare. They were surprised, but considering their options. So she asked me, if we find out that I'm pregnant, do you think you could round kick me in the stomach? She even said it with a straight face. No. Duck I'm. Way. From then on. She was one big pile of nope. In my eyes. Haven't seen her since that day. Ugh. Shudder shudder. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, and if you want to see more of Reddit Universe.